All right, morning, everybody. How are you? Fine. Well, we're here this morning for a very short meeting uh, to speak to you about your engagement. This, this meeting uh, came about when I met uh, about four or five youngsters last week. And uh, they told me about some of their friends who are not engaged and uh, who would like to be engaged. So I said, look, I'll let me meet you on Monday morning. I think I met them on Friday, right? Let me meet you Monday morning. So I'm here first thing to meet with you. First question, how many of you have heard about the National Employment Program? By a show of hands. You see? Well, some, some people have not heard about it. Huh? Some have not heard about it. And how many of you here are looking to be engaged under the NEP here? So all of you, some of you. Perhaps you are not interested in anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. What we'll do today is that we will get to those of you who are interested, because we cannot force you to be part of a program. The, the government's responsibility is to create the opportunity and the opportunities. And this government has done so in a number of areas. We have focused heavily on education, on housing, infrastructure, training of youth in various fields. Um, just to give you some statistics, when we came into office, only 40% of all primary school graduates in the country, meaning only 40% of everybody who got to grade six, back in the days of grade seven, would have access to secondary school. And I remember when I was going to school, when I attended primary, primary school, and several of us sat the, sat the exams, many of the, many young people, my colleagues, who I thought were smarter than me, did not make it to secondary school. And in my view, it's not because they did not pass the exams, but because at the time, before you sat the exams, the ministry knew how many students will accept, which is unfair. Because the intention of the exam is to see how many of us will pass. You understand? And then, so when we came into office, only 40% of all primary school graduates had access to secondary school. And when we did the study, we realized that that is unacceptable as a government, and we set ourselves a target in 2002 to achieve universal access to secondary education by 2007. But what we did as a government was that we what you call front-loaded the investments in education, which means that the investments we would have made over time, we decided to invest it almost immediately. And we achieved universal access to secondary education in Dominica two years in advance of 2007, meaning we achieved it in 2005. So within three years of setting the target, we were able to achieve universal access to secondary education, which means that every child who gets to grade six of any primary school anywhere in Dominica whether you're from Roseau or your school is in Penville or in Dalis or the Kalanago Territory, there's a space for you at a secondary school in Dominion. But we had another problem with education. In that, 7%, 7% of all high school graduates, secondary school graduates, went on to the college at the time which meant that 93% of people who graduated from secondary school 
prior to 2002, did not make it to secondary school. And just to give you a very simple statistic, I went to grammar school. And 122 of us sat the exams. Right? 122 of us sat the exams. And only 20 of us made it to secondary school, to, to, to the college. 20. And grammar school in those days was the, was the grammar school. You understand? 20 of us made it. So it means 120, 20, 102 sorry, of my friends did not make it because there was no space. And as fate would have it, because we have no control of our lives and in terms of what happens to us, we can prevent things because if we place ourselves in harm, if we use drugs, we'll, 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 we'll mess up our minds. If we're involved in drug trafficking, we'll either go to, go to prison or we'll, or we'll get shot and killed and be buried. These things, we can avoid these things. I became a lecturer at the college in 1997. And I was responsible, the principal at the time gave me the responsibility of assisting with the registration of students. So all these students from across Dominica who would want to get into the college, I met them. And assisted them with filling their forms to attend the college. And it was very disheartening and sad to see the number of students who had to be turned back. Not because they did not meet the requirements to get into the college, but because of the space. And what I would do, along with one of my colleagues at the time, is that we would register some students without the principal knowing and increase the number of students at the college beyond what the, 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 the majority or the, or, the, or the maximum the college could take. And I would tell I would, I would tell the uh, principal so a couple of weeks after school has started. Because for me, I, it was sad to see people who came from struggling families who studied and who did well at secondary school. Because it was a first come, first serve basis. And the truth is, sometimes who, who, who you knew or who knew you. And that is why some people in the country do not like me because I have broken down the barriers. It's not no longer who, who, who you know or who know you. It is based on the fact that you are Dominican and you are, should be exposed to the same opportunities like any rich family or person living name in Dominica. So that's why some people want to like, see me go back to Vegas and do not come back in politics. Well. <laughs> because no longer are only their children doctors and lawyers in Dominica. Doctors and lawyers are coming in from, and engineers and also the professionals are coming from ordinary families in Dominica. And so I left the college and I went into politics in, in 2000. And got in, we got into government. And as fate would have it again, I was appointed the Minister for Education in 2001. And I went to the Prime Minister then, Pierre Charles, and the cabinet. I said, look, the Labour Party has to change the landscape of education and access to education in Dominica, and to allow the majority of our people to have access to education opportunities. And that is where we created the State College in 2002. We created the State College to allow for there to be greater access to tertiary education in our country. So, and we have moved from 7% of high school graduates having access to the college, where today 90% of all high school graduates are attending the college. But we have set the platform and the foundation to allow for 100%. Once you meet the minimum requirements, to enter the college. So every, there's a space for every single Dominican student 
who sits the CXC exams and who meets the basic requirement to get into college, there's a space for you at the state college. Because we have, we have created the legal framework and the financial support and with the construction of the new state college, which I'm sure all of you have seen, where we spent over $35 million building for the young people. You understand? For the young people. And then, in terms of employment, we've tried to grow the economy, expand the economy, with new hotels being built for the first time. And we, we're starting a, a, a process which we, which, which we started before Erica, but Erica um, set us back a bit, to what we term the modernization of Dominica. Putting in new infrastructure, roads and and school buildings and hospital, the new hospital under construction, I'm visiting this afternoon. When that is complete, it will assist in improving the delivery of healthcare in our country. Very soon, hopefully by April, May or so, we will sign another contract for the reinstatement and enhancement of the King George Street, King George Fifth Street. Fifth Street from the Bayfront all the way past Astafan. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing the, um, from the East Little Block Bridge all the way up to the Gardens Gate, and we'll be doing a bypass for the Gardens. And we'll also be doing the Bridge George Street, which is the street to take you out of town to go on the new bridge that's been constructed. So we will, new drains, new sidewalks, put the cables, all the electrical lines and the, and the telephone lines underground. And, and reconstruct the road and, and, and start with the modernization of the city. We'll also we'll be building, at the same time, the uh, Riverside Promenade, where all of these old shacks you see along the, the riverbank will be replaced with, with nice facilities so that people can vend properly, can enhance their, their vending practices, and, and let it be more, a little bit friendlier to pedestrians and those of us who walk the streets and so forth. So what, what we're here today to talk about the NEP and, and to engage on the NEP, it is a program which started in 2013. And we launched it just across in the, in the, in the forecourt at the, at the stadium. And there are many people who said that it was a political gimmick. It was get towards elections. And when, once elections come, we will abandon the program. But we're in 2017. It was launched in 2013. And it is still going strong. And it is fully financed. And everybody who works gets paid at the end of the fortnight or at the end of the month. And this program is an opportunity for many of our young people to gain much needed experience and to demonstrate to prospective employers that one, we have the ability to work, <coughs> and two, we have the diligence and we are responsible, you understand? And we in fact can work if we're given opportunity. You understand? I will say to you here before, or any of my colleagues will say a few words to you. I'm, I'm just serving as the chairman of the function this morning. So. I will say to you finally, all of you who are here this morning, if you're interested in working, we will get you on. Anything. You will fill forms here today, we'll stay back. I have the entire staff of the NEP here. We have the coordinator, Mrs. Honoré, who's doing a fantastic job and her staff at the NEP office. They will stay back and, and to assist you with filling the forms, right? And they'll review it very quickly and we will engage you almost immediately. But let us be honest with each other. Let us be fair to each other. My responsibility and that of the government is to one, create opportunity, 
and secondly, give you an opportunity to take advantage of that opportunity. Which means it is our responsibility to get to create the NEP, which we, which we have done. And secondly, to allow you to participate in the National Employment Program. How long you work under the NEP depends exclusively and entirely on yourself. Because this program is not a program that is geared to us giving people money by still on, on watch um, Maury Povich or, <laughs> or whoever else, you know? Jerry Springer, you know? <laughs> I, I like to watch Jerry Springer sometimes. It's, it's, it's good to distress you, you know? You know this reaction, you relax and... But I haven't watched it a long time. You know? <laughs> no time, you know? So it's up to you, my friends, you know. My, my, my advice to you, you know, and I'm not, I'm not here speaking, uh, you know, as a prime minister. I'm here speaking as a young person like yourself, you know, and to say to you that we have to choose the right path in life, you know. There are times when there will be temptations to do the wrong thing, but we have to keep on the right track. And I would like to help you. But I cannot force anything onto yourself. You know, you have to be willing to, to work on addressing the issues. Yeah, that was the Dozzy Mayor of Rosa who just walked in there with the blue hat in his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he's my, he's my partner there. So it's up to you, my friends, to take, a, to take advantage of the opportunity. What you, what you will be assigned to, you must do it diligently. I don't talk about my experiences in life much. But I can tell you that when I attended school in the United States, I didn't have assistance from government. I had no scholarship, no grants, not one single cent from the government to Dominica. All right? School was financed with part waivers from the school and also my mother. But sometimes, you know, you. My mother works in, lives, used to work in Guadeloupe. She's not retired. At the time, they had francs. And my mind, for her to send one US for me, she'd have to get about 10 francs. You know what I'm saying? And I worked. I used to work in a cafeteria, preparing meals for 350 athletes. I used to fry eggs, I used to bacon, I used to. Sausage links, sausage parties, pancakes, grits. You understand know what I'm saying? We had to get up in the morning, five o'clock. We used to run today to work, prepare the breakfast, then set it up. The guys come for breakfast, you have to serve them. After you serve them, you have to wash the dishes. After you wash the dishes, you have to mop the floor and clean the tables. And my, my, the most difficult task was this, this, the chairs were very heavy because, you know, for a 350-pound athlete to sit on a chair, it must be strong. So you have to lift up 350 chairs, myself and some comrades, and mop the floor. And when you finish mopping the floor, you have to put the chairs back because you have to get ready for, for lunch. So I worked throughout my studies at the university. My last check came to meet me in Dominica because I, I couldn't wait for it at the time to come back. So you have to understand that our circumstance in life should not determine who we become. We have to make the best use of the circumstance. And if there are things that we have to change, then let us change it. And I can tell you there are times, you know, I would have the last $5 in my account 
Because I, whatever money I got, I had to buy groceries and I had to help pay for school. And I, in fact, a couple of times I had to pay school with my credit card. My credit card. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm dead broke before I just started. So I have to wait two weeks before I get paid. And should I, if I take all the $5 from the account, I, I would close the account. So I have to leave it there and watch, watch the $5 for the whole two weeks. You understand? And then the students who are studying overseas who we provide with all kinds of support and they, they cry for all kinds of little things, you know? And the reason why, and this is the first government that has, that has spent so much money on educating our children overseas. And I do so, everything, everything the government does, it, it is as a result of our, our own personal experiences because I would not like for any Dominican, any young person, to go through the same struggles which I went through studying. You understand? But I get the sense sometimes that we take these things for granted. As if, well, you know, the government must do these things. The government does not must do those things. Because before us in office, governments never did those things before. So if the government should have done those things, then why wasn't it done in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and so forth? It wasn't done. So I'm urging you, my brothers and sisters, that I can promise you here, all of you who are interested in joining the NEP, who feels a form, will be engaged. All of you who are here this morning. But my, my point, I just want to reiterate to you, you will be engaged as long as you wish if you're serious about what you're doing. <clears throat> so you cannot not come to work. You'll have a supervisor. You'll be assigned to an employer, a business place. You have to respect time. Work is 8 o'clock, not 8.15. If work is Monday to Friday, you cannot skip Monday and skip Friday. And then show up on fortnight, the last day of the fortnight, and say, well, you know, I might pay. And expect to get paid for the whole fortnight. You know what I'm saying? So I, I will end in and, and, and thank you for, for being here. I want to thank my friend here and my, my friend here and a couple of you who mobilized the people, who informed the people of this meeting. Um, and to say to you that um, I look forward, the next time I'm, I'm see, I'll see you is that you'll be engaged. You'll be engaged. Okay? Thank you. Good morning. Uh,